Who are some of the people that uh, influenced you and how did they influence you? In music or life? Or? In, in life and music. Um, in life, there's a lot of people that I, that I know, just, you know, regular people, mm -hmm. that I see amazing things about them, you know, that have overcome the odds and that are doing things that they're not supposed to be able to do. Society says they're not supposed to be able to do. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and people who just, no matter what's going on, they keep a certain dignity about them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's one thing that I was always taught. I've never let these people in society see how they're hurting you. Right. You know what I mean? Um, still carry yourself. Don't go crazy. Don't let them. Don't let them. Don't don't let them see that they're driving you crazy. Even right. if they, even if you know, be crazy in your private moments. You don't know what don't I mean? let them get to you. Yeah, and even if they do, don't let them see that they're getting to you. You know what I mean? Because then they know they're winning, and then they know that that kind of proves to them that 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 kind of justifies their treatment of you. Mm. You know what I mean? And so I'm saying, you know, you might go in to get a job and, and um, you know, they just completely dismiss you. Don't even give me a chance. You know what I mean? If you flip the desk over and whatever, then that, that's them being able to justify. That lets them, you know, feel justified in their mind for the way that they treat you. Yeah. That's a pretty basic example, but, um, you know, just normal people that I've been around. And then I, you know, I got heroes like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X is one of my people. Yeah, yeah. You know, just because of all the different stages that he went through. Mm -hmm. And all the different, um, how he was so willing to learn something new and then change. Mm -hmm. You know, things that, when he believed in something, he believed in it wholeheartedly. And he pursued it wholeheartedly. Right. Um, he pursued the streets wholeheartedly. He pursued, um, you know, being... Yeah, they called him Satan in prison. He was the baddest motherfucker in the prison. You know what I mean? And he pursued that wholeheartedly. Right. And then when he found the nation of Islam, like the, that Elijah Muhammad was taught and was teaching the people, he pursued that wholeheartedly. Right. And every and, and then when he realized that they were kind of given a, a, a narrower view than what really what Islam had to offer, mm -hmm. he pursued that whole. You know what I mean? That's awesome. And and so every stage he was willing to realize that. The thing that he had been pushing so hard for might have a flaw in it, mm -hmm. and so, for the sake of wanting to be the best he could be, he would adjust himself. Mm -hmm. And then his new his new vision, he would, you know, push at it all. Truth, um, you have like in your, I think it's the third verse. You talk about teaching the children more of the truth, mm -hmm. and also in, in the song about your son, you um, talk about a lot of lessons that you want him to learn and kids to learn. What kind of lessons would you like um, leaders that are in school or even after school programs like Rock for Hunger teaching the children? I mean, the, the number one thing that a, that a kid can can um, benefit from, in my view, is just that is that the, the um, you know, I, just with the example of my son, you know, my son has seen a lot of crazy things in his life. Mm -hmm. And I try to always just really reinforce with him that the things that are going on around you aren't because, the, situs, the circumstances you're in is not because you're not as good a kid as, as these other kids. Mm -hmm. Like you're still every bit as valuable as these kids. Exactly. And, um, you know, just because, you know, just because they got toys and they got a Game Boy and you don't have a Game Boy, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that um, God likes them better. It doesn't mean right. that, you know, like I had to kill that Santa Claus idea real quick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't mean that, that they're better kids than you. And it doesn't mean that they deserve it more than you. You know what exactly. I mean? Like some, sometimes things happen for other reasons, then they're the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. you know? um, 
And, and the other thing I always teach my son is that all the hard shit that you've been through, if you can keep it together and if you can keep your, your head on straight, that's going to be your edge over these weak kids. Right. After this tour, um, what, what are the plans? Are you writing a new album? Yeah, me and Ant made a new EP. I t- like, in the last year, I toured uh, nine out of those 12 months. And um, so three of them were off and me and Ant made a new EP. Mm-hmm. That's 10 songs. It's done. Um, it ba- it's called The Truth Is Here EP. Okay. Like last time, we did an album called Shadows on the Sun and we took one of those songs champion and made an EP out of it. Okay. And so this one we did the Undisputed Truth and took one one of like one of those ideas of truth is here mm-hmm. and made an EP out of it. Mm-hmm. So that that's ten new songs and then there's also a DVD of the um, of the uh, homecoming show okay. on my on my first headliner tour. Um, so that'll come out and then me and Ann also after we did that we started working on the next album. So a year from now, spring oh nine. Awesome. We'll have a new album. Where, where can people go to find your music? Uh, BrotherAli.com, RhymeSayers.com, MySpace.com, slash, I don't know if it's a forward or backslash, but slash Brother Ali. Okay, awesome. Uh, any last words for the volunteers of Rock for Hunger or anybody watching? Um, the volunteers, you guys are doing the work that the rest of us wish we could do. Um, and um, I would say, I, I actually worked at my, I was an employee, I did as a volunteer for a long time, but then was an employee of my mosque in my neighborhood in North Minneapolis, which is the inner city hood, ghetto, slum, whatever you want to call it, in Minneapolis. And um, we actually, we started a food shelf and we had a lot of outreach stuff and it's, they're still going. I, I, I started doing music so I don't work there anymore. But, um, I would say, um, just do what you can. Don't try to do more than what one human being can do. Um, Cause you get burnt out, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And you don't always see the, the, the effect that you're having. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cause of people's pride a lot of the times. Um, you know, they may or may not show you the effect. That you're, you're really there to just be one person and make the little bit of change that you can, that you can and believe in your ability to do that. Um, then you'll get what you want out of it. You know, because one person can do a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And as if you do the little bit you do, then you should be able to sleep at night. Yeah. Awesome. Well, th- thanks again for the time, cool, and I uh, wish you all the best in the rest of the tour. Thank you. All right. Um, good luck on the rest of the tour. Thank you. And I'll see you tonight at the social. <laughs> Peace.